It is a very busy time for Alan McDonald. On Wednesday night, he led Queen's Park Rangers for the fourth time in ten days as they took on Chelsea in a game crucial to their Premier League survival. With more than ten years served at Loftus Road, he's still shown the same fighting qualities as he's done on over 300 occasions, leading by example and an inspiration to his team. To be honest with you, I've always been a bit of a bully on a, on a football pitch, you know, if, um, you know, I've been a bit of a dominating person, you know, where uh, I'm always very vocal and passionate, you know, and, and, and sort of hard working and, and, and helpful, you know, trying to help people around, whether that needs um, encouragement or whether it needs a few um, rockets in certain people's ears. If I can set a good standard of performance, I would hope that the players around me, that, it, that I can turn around and lift them to that level. You know, everybody's not going to play well on a certain game. But if they're working hard, well, you know, a lot of things can happen. A man for all seasons, McDonald wins his 45th cap next week in a career that stretches back to 1986 when he stood up to the mighty Brazilians in Mexico. Good tackle on the edge of the area by Alan McDonald at Queen's Park Rangers. Obviously at that time being a young lad, you don't realise then how important it is for you. It's a big occasion, but you just don't realise how special it is. And to go out to the World Cup and play against the likes of Brazil, I mean, it's probably one of the very, very few times in my career that I've ever been beaten 3-0 by a team, and it's been a pleasure. I think after about 71 minutes, I took um, Dr. Socrates off and brought Zico on. <laughs> you know, I mean, but to me, that, I mean, it was just being a privilege being on the same pitch as guys like that. Things have changed since then. They lost 4-0 at home to the Republic back in November. Alan McDonald was missing on that occasion, but he's back in the Northern Ireland defence on Wednesday against a team already three points clear with a game in hand. The Republic of Ireland have had phenomenal success over the last lot of years since Jack Charlton's taken over. Um, the guys work very, very hard for each other. They've got a great spirit there, and especially at home at Lansdowne Road, you know they have a, a big crowd, a very passionate crowd behind them. And every time, you know, we, we've done well in parts of the games, but. In certain spurts, they just seem to get a real surge. And a good result for us would be a draw. You know, it would be a, a, a fabulous result for us in Dublin. Um, if we can come away from Dublin with anything whatsoever, as regards a good result, then I'll be, I'll be over the moon. Do you think that would still keep you in the pack and with a chance of qualifying? I think the most disappointing thing with the Belfast result was that we'd won in Austria and everybody was on a great high. And then we came to the Republic game and we lost heavily. And I was in the dressing room after the, afterwards with the lads and, and I was so disappointed for them because we're all sick. You know, they all knew that they hadn't done the business that night and they were disappointed. And we've got to make points up somewhere. You know, and, and fo football's a funny business. You know, you never know what, what's going to happen on Wednesday. You know, on paper the Republic should, should win against us. We, we never know, Garth, you know, and, and, and if we can pick points up where we're not supposed to pick points up, well then I would say that we're not out of the hunt. But it does 